I'm Jason, the world is yours, and today we have a story about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 Season 4 Reloaded Patch Notes. Well, I'm a DMZ player, basically 99% exclusively, so we're just going to head to the DMZ section. Okay, let's see where the DMZ, there's events. Um, it may be all the way at the bottom. DMZ is almost always at the bottom. There's audio stuff social let me see anything on the dmz pc cooperative bug fixes playlists more bug fixes events uh dmz there's another playlist there's more maps there's some modes there it's a cool operator skin i'm probably gonna have to buy that operator skin because that operator skin is dope and if you think about it imagine seeing this operator skin in vondo it would be almost impossible to see the person if you really want to be honest okay where is the dmz at dmz is almost always at the bottom right okay it has to be coming out oh here it goes dmz the patch notes detailed in this section below are exclusive to um the dmz mode which i play basically exclusively okay here we go gameplay for a dmz mode season four um, reloaded updates. There are reports of a new enemy force attempting to infiltrate Building 21 proceed with caution operators. I mean, I don't think that's good news for anyone. Everyone who plays DMZ basically hates um, Building 21, so to hear that there's new a new enemy force attempting to infiltrate Building 21, I don't think that's like, you know, that's not really even good news. Okay, temp uh, v has arrived read more about this in the war zone section above effects are limited okay that's interesting effects will be limited in the dmz mode such as no charge jump and increase scar is it scar scarcity i have no idea what that word means on the map versus battle royal i have no idea what that means uh adjustments player players can now see the progress they have made on their upgraded upgrade missions in after action report okay increase the time for plea um from 15 seconds to 20 seconds after your squad has been eliminated i mean i think some people have been complaining that you know the plea is too quickly you don't you know there's so much happening on the screen you don't really know when you can plea so now you get an extra five seconds to plea after your squad has been eliminated okay the plea for help timer that triggers after you and the last player on a squad eliminated will now pause while holding down the plea button. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Plea for help and assimilation. Okay, now this is interesting. When reviving someone who is pleading, the player who was pleading will no, will no longer auto-join the reviver's team. Why would they do that for? That's interesting. Oh, boy. I don't... They just, like, nerf plea for help, right? Uh, I don't know about that one. Why would... That's interesting. When reviving someone who is pleading, the player who was pleading will no longer auto-join the reviver's team. Why would you revive someone if they're not going to join the team? I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing. There will be a 30-second grace period after a player is revived where the reviver's team will not be able to damage the player who was pleading. Huh. Okay. After reviving, the reviver will be given a prompt to invite the revived player to their team. Hmm. The plea for help and loot prompts are now separate. Okay. I, you know, I know, I don't know. Reading that, what I'm thinking is they just nerfed plea for help. And I'm thinking less people are going to be um, either pleading for help or helping the plea for help. Like, you're just going to loot them. For, I, I don't know if that's a good idea at all. I, I, that's interesting. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, that's interesting. The, the plea for help, yeah. The plea for help revive prompt is now on the player's body and the loot prompt is now on the backpack like normal. Looting the player first will not disable the plea option. I'm, uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, they really nerfed plea for help. Um, 
created a created a direct assimilation function to only send a request to one person uh, to only send a request to one person the team who killed the player that is pleading will no longer be able to accept their plea request and then revive this prevents killing to force us um uh okay i just woke up <laughs> i gotta be honest. i did just wake up it's 9 30 here in vegas all of this 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 sounds bad like if you really think about it, i mean it sounds bad for assimilation right like everything about this seems like they nerfed plea for help like personally i'm trying to think like if if someone is pleading for help, why would I go and revive them if they aren't going to join my team? Why would I loot their body and then invite them to my team? People get so pissed off when you loot, <laughs> right? Like if you loot someone's body after they plead, they are almost 99% chance that they will not want to join your team. So, I mean, you know, that's interesting. So, I mean, I guess you could loot a player and, I guess, let them live and you get 30 seconds to run away. But, I mean, how far can you get in 30 seconds if your body has been looted and you have no weapons? And you're not in and you're basically a solo. I, I don't I don't I'm going to have to I'm going to go through that section again. That's that's hmm. it doesn't say anything about six person squads. But they definitely nerfed the plea for help and like by a lot. He said, wow, the team who killed the player that is pleading will no longer be able to accept their plea requests. Hold on. And then revive. This prevents killing to force assimilation. The team who killed the player that is pleading for help will no longer be able to accept their plea and then revive this prevents hmm. so i mean you could still you would i guess you would ha i have no idea how does this work right i guess you have to send out like very very direct um um join squads um before a player could join your squad, right? Because if you kill a player and then they plea, you know, you would revive them and they would automatically join your team. Now it's like a... It's almost like they won't be able to join your team. I, I, I'm going to have to read that again. That's interesting. I, I have no idea what's going on there. That I'm just going to have to look at this, but from what I'm assuming, this doesn't seem good, right? Like, I got to be honest, I'm... That does not seem good at all. You get 20 seconds of... I, I don't... I don't know. This is interesting. That's interesting. Um, yeah, this, this section right here is going to make um, DMZ Season 4 Reloaded a very different game. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's going to be a very different game, right? Because now Assimilation has been nerfed like very 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 much so nerfed and um it doesn't say anything about six person squads you could still have a six person squads let's say you run into a team and instead of ki killing them you basically have to send out a request right because it says that the um it says that the team who killed the player that is pleading for that that is pleading will no longer be able to accept their plea request and then revive. This prevents killing to force a similar... Oh, no, this is... I don't know, man. Because if you think about it, like, if you get killed, you normally... You probably... You normally plead so the team that killed you could pick you up. Right? Now, if, if the team... It says the team that killed the player that is pleading will no longer be able to accept their plea request and then revive? What? So if you kill a player, um, the only thing you could do is loot them or you could revive them and they won't be able to join your team. And for 30 seconds, they have to run 
as fast as possible away from you um, to get away. I, I don't know about that. Because if you think about it, the team that kills you is 90 to 99% is going to be the team that revives you. Where if you are like killed on the map and there's a plea and you know the there's a let's say a third party team that had no no idea what's happening with that fight, they're most likely not gonna help your plea because they think it's a trap, right? They think like, okay, I'm not gonna go help this person pick them up because they're you know, their team is probably just waiting for me. Wow, I we're gonna have to figure that out, but it says this prevents killing to force assimilation, which was I mean, you know, in many ways, you have to say it's a good thing, right? Because if someone knocks you, kills you, you plea, they pick you up, you know, it's really not that big of a deal. They probably won't take your weapons. They probably won't loot you. But now if you kill a player, it says the team who killed the player that is pleading will no longer be able to accept their plea um, their plea request and then revive. People are going to really really get mad at you know what i'm saying pvp was hated before now it seems like if you kill a player they won't be able to join your squad is that pop i don't i don't know i have no idea this this section right here is very interesting uh it says when reviving someone who is pleading the player who was pleading will no longer auto join the revivers team wow uh, okay Okay, we got to, that that section right there. That that's a big that's a big deal for this this um this season. This is a that's kind of a big deal for assimilation because they really 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 nerfed the plea for help section, right? Like because like I said, like for the most part, if you plea, you probably are gonna join the team that killed you. You're not gonna get picked up by a third party team, right? So, I mean, now if you kill a player, it's, it says when reviving someone who is pleading, the player who was pleading will no longer auto join the revivers team. Why would you? I'm trying to, I'm just trying to figure out if I kill someone, right? I knock them, I loot them. Why would I revive them? What, what's the incentive to revive? Now, yes, there's some good players who be like, hey, man, I'm just a solo, you know, and they were like, okay, you know, it's cool, but you got to extract, or, you know, I'm going to loot you, but you have 30 seconds to get away. That's just not enough time. Like, they're just going to either kill you again or they're not going to pick you up. I don't see why anyone would pick you up, you know. I mean, yes, there are cool players, of course. If you have a mic, be like, hey, man, can you just pick me up? I really am just trying to, you know... um, extract and, and things like that but if you can't auto re, auto join the team that just killed you the plea for help section has just been nerfed it wow I, you know maybe i'm wrong like i said it's 9 30 in the morning here in las vegas so i literally just woke up so i'm pretty tired but it sounds like they really really nerfed the plea for help and i don't know if it's a good thing man i don't know if it's a good thing let's see now here's another part like there's so many notes right here it goes players Hunting players, okay, PvP again. If a player and their squad kill too many players in DMZ, that high kill individual player will be issued a warning? What? <laughs> Hold on, let me... Oh, man, it is 9.30 in the morning. Let me, let me see what's going on here. Now we're talking about PvP. If a player and their squad kills too many players in DMZ... That high kill individual player will be issued a warning. What what does that even mean? Issued a warning? What kind of warning? Oh, okay, here it goes. If they kill another player, they can expect a a bounty on their head. Enemy operators in the exclusion um, zone will then receive intel on your position to secure a reward upon completion killing a player with a bounty um will reward everybody in the squad ten thousand. this bounty is not active in building 21 or the koshe complex now his whew, pvp man like okay so let's just let's just really think about this let let's just really think about this right so if you are running around dmz 
PVPing everybody, right? Um, personally, if I get a heads up that, hey, I can go and, you know, there's a bounty on someone's head because they've already killed, let's say, five players, six players, three players, two players. I, I got to be honest, I'm more likely not going to go after them. Like, it seems like this is like a reward. Like, if you think about it, right? Like, people are going to kind of enjoy this bounty because it's going to be like, yeah, bring it on. Like, right? I've already killed five other players. You, what are you going to do? Right? So the bounty, that doesn't really... I thought they were going to have, like, a boss go after you. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're, like, a low-ranked player and you, you you get a prompt that there's a player on your map that's already killed five other operators, for $10,000, you want to risk going and being the sixth operator killed, the seventh operator killed? I, that, that, I just got to be honest. Personally, that does not motivate me to want to go and, you know, uh, you know, get this bounty on, on this person for ten thousand like, dollars it's just I, you know I, I don't know about that that doesn't it just doesn't motivate me and it seems like you know a badge of honor <laughs> let's, let's just really be honest like if you enjoy pvp um you know it's gonna basically be a, a badge of honor like hey look at me i don't know what the number is gonna be you know hey look at me i've already killed four operators i've already killed five operators i've already killed six operators bring it on right if you really want to pull up for you know a ten thousand dollars right you're just going to be killed also so personally if i see the bounty and you can call me uh you know a little baby i'm not going after you know a player that's already killed five six seven other or three or four other operators so that doesn't motivate me at all now the weapons case that's that's fun that's always fun on a map you know you have teams going after you you're you're located on a map you know that's fun because getting the weapons case doesn't involve you know necessarily pvp you have to go and kill a boss you have to go into a building that's locked so most people don't have the keys to get into those buildings so if you have a, if you have the weapons case and you're running you know through the um map everybody can see you everybody can see you everybody's going going to go after you that's going to be fun pvp it's going to be very very fun pvp but if you are a pvp player and you've already killed let's say three let's say four you get a warning you kill five players now there's a bounty on your head for ten thousand and no one pulls up of course not, because you've already killed five or six operators. So, like I said, personally, that does not motivate me at all to go and get this ten thousand dollar bounty. Ten thousand is just not even a lot of money, right? Like it should have been fifty. It should have been a hundred, right? You you could really w risk ten thousand dollars. You can go to yum. You could literally go to yum yum burger and get ten thousand. You can go to a bank and get ten. So. <laughs> that I, I I don't know. I, like I said, I thought this was gonna be like okay, if you are a you know if you're hunting too many players, you're gonna get like a boss come after you. You know, like the helicopter, the juggernaut's gonna spot. You know, something like that. You know, where the boss you'd have to deal with the boss shooting at you, giving away your position, or a helicopter shooting at you. But personally, like I said, if, if there's a bounty on someone's head for ten thousand dollars because they've already killed too many players it does not motivate me at all to want to go and try to kill that player i don't want to become the next operator that they basically kill so that uh, who knows what's going on there okay now we got bugs fixes fixed doors on hostage res rescue contract buildings being locked if the contract ends um okay i don't know what that means um, fix an issue where the hostage in hostage rescue contract was not dropping on the ground properly when the player carrying the hostage was struck or killed with equipment. Fic fixing incorrect items being listed in the upgrades menu. Fix the train safe not tracking for purposes of the demolitions mission. Fix the icebreaker mission tracking for the items being placed in any dead drop instead of the um, specified one fix the force alarm mission being able to be complete in maps besides Almajra. Uh, fix the strike team mission not counting 
the kill if the player was standing on top of a vehicle. Fix a number of issues affecting uh, mission descriptions. Okay, that's that's good. Um, because sometimes you think like you've had the mission complete and it you know you would think it's bugged. So maybe that's what they're saying when they fix a number of issues affecting missions description. Maybe they'll get a little bit more specific as to what you can do so missions won't be you know quote unquote bugged. Fix an issue where completed urgent um missions were not resetting on subsequent days. I've had that happen a few times where I complete the urgent mission and then I go back and it's like, it's like, it's not checked. And I'm like, hold on, I, I literally just completed that mission. I don't know what the hell is going on. Um, fix an issue where the mission title was sometimes missing from the mission timer. Okay, fix an issue where extracted items sometimes weren't um, unlocked correctly. Fix the problem with missions that require the player to infill into Koshe Complex. Fix a problem with missions that require the player to infill into Koshe Complex. Sounds like another bug. Um, fix an issue where barter items weren't unlocking correctly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> fix an issue where the container for secure uh, nuclear ma material would not be usable after one player empties it. Okay. Fix an issue where the phallic tier four fearless um, mission was not checking if other teammates were carrying the weapons case. Fix an issue where some blueprints um, were miss showing a placeholder image in the after action report when extracted from a DMZ. Fix the issue where the fear in your eyes challenge was not tracking throwing star kills. Okay, I mean. <sighs> You know, the last three, four seasons, DMZ has really, really, you know, I mean, they've added just Vondel, Koshe Complex, Barter, um, Assimilation, um, sing solo players, pleading for help. I got to be honest, as you know, like I said, it's 9.45 in the morning. I just woke up. <sighs> Me being a DMZ, I haven't seen just... Not just one positive. <laughs> if I get up here, just one thing like, oh man, that's cool. That's, you know, I can't wait to do that in season four of Reload. I, I don't, you know, I didn't see anything really positive in this. The, it doesn't seem like they offered anything new. Like, if you, what's the new, you know, what's the new thing here in season four Reloaded? What's, I can't name one thing that's like new to the game mode nothing there's just there's just nothing new i mean you could say that the new thing is the bounty on someone's head for killing too many players but respectfully like i said i think that's going to be a badge of honor right like if you are a pvp player right you're going to want that bounty like i don't think it's going to stop players from um killing players because you have a bounty in your head for 10,000. If you've already killed three operators, four operators, I don't know what the number is. They said if you kill, um, if a player in their squad killed too many players in DMZ, that high kill individual player will be issued a warning. I don't, what's, what's the warning, right? If they kill another player, they can expect a bounty on their head. Um, enemy operators in the exclusion zone will receive intel on your position to secure a reward upon completion. I don't know, man. I personally, like I said, I'm not going to be running after someone because they have a bounty on their head for $10,000. Like I said, I would just rather run to a bank. I would just rather run to Yum Yum Burger, you know, to get 10000 I personally do not think it's worth the risk. If someone has already killed three of the operators, four of the operators, five of the operators, right, for $10,000. Like I said, I personally think this is going to be more of a badge of honor than anything. Um, I think people are going to really enjoy that they have a bounty on their head. And they're going to be telling all the other players, like, yeah, pull up. You know, for the most part, it seems like they, you know, they seem to have buffed. <laughs> that seems like a buff to pvp in my opinion but maybe i'm wrong you know maybe people are going to be scared because their location is out and there's a ten thousand um 
dollar reward, you know, and they're going to receive a quote unquote warning, you know, that there's going to be a bounty on their head. But like I said, if you are a, you know, a non PVP player and you don't really love PVP and DMZ, you are probably not going to run after the person who has already killed three, four, five, six, seven other operators for a $10,000 reward. Like I said, you could literally go to Yum Yum Burger. You can go to one of the five, six banks on the map and get $10,000 way easier than trying to go and kill the person who already killed many other operators. I personally think that's going to be a badge of honor. And I think a lot of people are going to be killing more operators to get that badge of honor. <laughs> like, you know, and that's, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, it's really early in the morning here in Las Vegas. I literally just woke up. But the big thing we have to talk about is I, I'm just going to read this one more time. And, you know, I'm not going to go over each one and just talk about the plea for help system um, here. Let me see. Um it says increased time for plea from um, 15 seconds to 20 seconds. Uh, the plea for help triggers after you and the last player on your squad um, eliminated will pause while holding down the button, yada, yada, yada. Plea for help and assimilation. When reviving someone who is pleading, the player who was pleading will no longer auto join the revivers team. That's not good, right? In my opinion, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, you know, nine, ninety nine percent of the times the person who does pick me up um, is the person who killed me. Um, and then you join the squad, you know, you're normally like, hey, come on, pick me up because I don't think you're going to get a third party come and help you. Like, I don't really see that happening, happening. So that's not a good thing. There will be a 30 second grace period after a player is revived where the reviver team will not be able to damage the player who is pleading. Um, I'm just going to be honest. I personally don't think unless the person has a, a, a microphone and they're like, hey, man, I really am just trying to exfil. Can you just pick me up? And, you know, I got 30 seconds. I'll get away from your team. And, you know, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm just going to exfil. But after you loot their body, right, you take all the weapons, you take whatever you got to take from them. I don't see the point of reviving. I just don't see the point. I, I really, you know, maybe I'm wrong. After reviving, the reviver will be given a prompt to invite the uh, revived player to their team. See, I, see, I don't see. It says after. Okay, so you do. You will have to revive them, and then you have a choice if you want to invite them to your team. Okay, that's that's a good sign, right? That is actually a good sign. So. But see, I don't understand, like, how can both of these things be true? They said the team who killed the player that is pleading will no longer be able to accept their plea request and then revive. This prevents killing to force assimilation. But it also says after reviving, the reviver will be given a prompt to invite the revived player to their team. How can both of those things be true, right? Like, I don't understand. The, key, the team that who killed the player that is pleading will no longer be able to accept their plea request and then revive. I don't, I don't know. We're going to have to see um, the plea for help and loot prompts are now separate. That That's a good thing. I can't, you know, that's a great thing. Um, but I, I don't understand. The plea for help revive prompt is on the player's body and the loot prompt will be on the backpack like normal. That's interesting. That makes sense. Looting the player first will not disable the plea option. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Created a direct assimilation function to only send a request to one person. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> right? So if you send out requests, it only goes to one person. If that person doesn't accept your request, you have to send it out, what, 18 more times? I, I don't know. The team who killed the player that is pleading will no longer be able to accept their plea request and then revive. This prevents killing to force assimilation. I, I don't know. Let me know your opinion of this story. Like I said, I'm a 99% DMZ player. I'm not disappointed in these news at all. It's fine. Because I normally don't plead. Truthfully, when I get knocked and killed, I almost 99% don't plead because... I can't say 
don't plead. Because I have a mic. If, if they're like, hey, plead, we'll pick you up. But for the most part, if I get killed, I just let the game in. And I just move on to the next round. Um, because if they don't pick you up, I feel like my stats aren't save. If, if the plea isn't um, answered, I have to quit the game. And it feels like my stats aren't save. You know, when you get the stats at the end that says AI killed. So I just get killed and then I just move on to the next round. So, I, you know, but like I said... Um, truthfully, um, I haven't, I haven't seen one thing in this reloaded, um, reloaded patch updates that's just like, oh, I can't wait to do that. You know, a few seasons ago, we had like the barter system where it's like, okay, running around, picking up a wrench and a bandage. It's like, okay, that makes sense. Now you can barter for items. You got the workbench where picking up contraband weapons, you can mod the contraband weapons. Okay. It's like, dude, that, that makes sense. Um, you got the Koshe complex. It's like, oh, El Majo is dope. Now you have some underground. Now you get to go and do things like that. But I, I didn't see anything in these patch notes that's like a new function, a new um, option that really is like adding to the DMZ mode. I, I, I haven't seen anything besides the bounty. And like I said, I personally think the bounty is going to be a, a more of a badge of honor. And I think more players is going to be pvping and less pleading for help but let me know your opinion of this story i'm jason the world is yours today we had a story about call of duty um call of duty dmz mode season four um reloaded patch notes and updates let me know your opinion of this story i'm about to go and play it it looks like it's finally um updated it's about 10 am here in las vegas so i'm gonna go and play this mode for like the next what maybe two hours i gotta go to work but um play for like the next two hours and see what's going on and see what's happening with the plea for requests and things like that but hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the one dollar donation button and please tune in to the next video on this channel thanks a million for watching